Um, there's um, a limited amount of statistical analysis tools available inside QGIS. You can load some, um, some plugins, such as a group stats plugin, and that can do some simple grouping stats. Um, I would however say that in most situations it would be easier to, um, to take our data and then work with them in, um, in Excel because it's very easy to copy and paste data from, um, from QGIS into Excel or whatever your favorite stats program is. I normally use our Excel's pivot function or I use Python and the pandas library which is, which is also a statistical processing library for the programming language python so it's relatively easy to do these things um, to demonstrate this i will um, look at um, the distribution of different social indicators in the danish municipalities so if i go into qgis um, to demonstrate how we can use a combination of QGIS and Excel to do some quick statistical analysis. I have this data set where I have the Danish municipalities and for each municipality I have associated some socioeconomic information such as how many have a bachelor, how many have a master's or PhD, uh, average income, uh, how many are on transfer income. So. Um, pensions or study grants and how many times on average people have gone to the doctor um, and a lot of other things here. So these are my attributes here. Um, I also have this sex ratio which is the ratio between males per female. So in this area there is a wee bit more males than females. But this is a virtual attribute so it's not part of the data set as such. My idea is, or the general concept is in many discussions, is that we have what we call a rotten banana, which is down the west coast here and some of these islands down here and up along the west coast of Sealand. These areas are generally less educated um, lower income, more people go to the doctor and so on. That's at least what the, the, the discussion is. So the question is, can we see if that is true? So I would like to do a quick and dirty analysis of this. And first of all, I would want an attribute so I can distinguish between municipalities that are part of the rotten banana and the ones that are not. So I will start out by going in and opening my attribute table. I can do it in here because there are not so many uh, objects in this data set. There's only one for municipalities. So I'll create a new one and I will call it, I'll create it as a real field and I'll call it rotten banana. And it's going to be an integer and it will start out with the value of zero. So all municipalities by default are not part of the rotten banana. Remember zero is false. So now all my attributes have this rotten banana. It's one the, the sex ratio is out to to right here because that's um, a virtual one. So it's just before those. So we have zeros everywhere. I will now move this over. There. So what I'll now do is that I will do a selection set. So I'll take my select by polygon and draw a polygon which covers these areas that I would call part of the rotten banana. Probably something like this. Uh, this is absolutely also. Um, and right click to finish. And uh, then I would, that's my annoying, I'll just turn off the edit tool. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then I will hold my modifier key down and do a, another polygon down here. Matter of fact, I don't have to hold down the modifier key yet. 
um, I just have to do it when I'm finished with my polygon. So something like this. And then I'll hold down my modifier key and right click. So now I've got all of these municipalities selected. Well, that's um, the ones that are in the rotten banana or not, or what if the rotten banana exists. I will discuss here, but let's say that these are the ones that we have. If I go into my attribute table, you will see that some of them are selected. Okay. So if I go in and take my rotten banana attribute, look at it and say, okay, I'll use my field calculator here and say update a field, update my rotten banana over here to one. So what will happen now is that it will update those only 37 that are selected and they will be updated with a one in them. So now if I click, oops, once you click on this tool here, click here, you will see that this one is part of the rotten banana. This one is not. If I hadn't done a uh, started out with rotten banana as zero, I could now just go in and switch my selection, so invert my selection set, and then I could to uh, a offset them to zero using the, my same calculating tool here. So I could say modify and run banana and set them to zero. Not necessary in this case because I have done it, but never mind. So now I have the ones and the zeros, and I'll just stop my editing like that. So. We are now ready to um, to look at what we can do with this data set. Uh, always good is to get rid of selections if you're not using them. And then I can open my attribute table. I can click up here, which means select everything. And I can then do a copy of this. And go into Excel. The only thing to be really worried about here is what happens with Danish uh, we have this comma, um, so which is a somewhat different uh, decimal value uh, than our uh, people have. But as you can see here, I have set my computer to work in English, so I have the dot as my decimal value. So everything looks nice and happy here. And you can also see that even though the sex ratio was not part of the data set, when I copied into Excel, it was there, and we can see that there's a lot of zeros in my rotten banana, and there's a lot of that non-zeros in my rotten banana. Uh, these very, very long ones is because we have out here, this first column is the polygon that defines the shape that's also copied. Um, so in here we have the coordinates of each municipality. We don't need that, so I'll just delete it like that. So we are now ready to use my favorite tool in Excel, the pivot table. So we start out by marking, just have to select a cell somewhere in the continuous area of cells, so no empty lines anywhere. And then go under insert and say pivot. And say it will now expand to the whole of the range. As you can see that, and you say okay. And now we're in the pivot table. And what we want to do here is that we here we've got all our attributes and here we have what we have as columns, what we have as rows and what we have as a value in between. So I want to say that I want my rotten banana as my columns. So now I have non-rotten banana, rotten banana. Then I want to know uh, how many of the people in these two groups are on transfer income. So I move that down to my value here. And by default, it shows as sum that doesn't make sense here. So I'll just change that to average. So here we have 
that almost the same number of people are on transfer income in the rotten banana and in not in the rotten banana. So that's not part of it. I should be said that if we looked at what type of transfer income, we might see that some of the students are a higher representation one. So let's look at how many students or how many people percent of the population have a bachelor as the highest fulfilled educational level. So we include bachelor and again it does this thing sum and I'll change it to average. And what I'm now going to do is see that it's also got this sum of values as my columns. I move this down to rows. So now we have average income. We have 10% outside the rotten banana and 11% inside the rotten banana. If you have average as bachelors, we have 1% outside the rotten banana and 0.6% inside. So only about half as many of the bachelor. If you go one degree up, look at the candidates and change that to our average. And we might as well take the PhDs and change them to average. We can see that there is again around double as many, many people with a well, high, double as high percentage of the population in each municipality with a candidate. And there is about five times as high a percentage of the population with a PhD degree. And of course, this will probably also reflect in our average income. So I want income, and again, what showed as the average value. So now we have the average annual income, and you can see that it's about 50,000 kroner more a year if you are outside the rotten banana than in the rotten banana. So we have some indications that there might exist a rotten banana, not so much on how many people are on the transfer income, but at least on the educational level, and probably also other attributes. And of course, we could take these values here, and we could insert a little graph of these. Let's take the bar chart. Um, something like this. Ah, okay, that's not a good choice because that one is out of the scale compared to our one, so let's check this one instead. Here we can see that we have um, a wee bit more on transfer income outside the rotten banana than in the, and we have clearly more with a bachelor outside the rotten banana than in the rat. We have many more candidates and also, although there are not many, many PhDs, there are clearly more PhDs. So it's relatively easy to combine um, Excel's pivot table with um, the attribute table in, uh, in QGIS. And the same goes if you um, prefer to use uh, Python's um, together with Pandas. That's also a relatively easy operation. So. Although QGIS does not have so many um, tools for doing attribute statistics inside it, you can combine it with what you've got in Excel.